Hi, this is Sarah Benedict, and you're listening to Heaven Bound. I see a sea. Good morning again, friends, and welcome one more time to Heaven Bound. Once again, on behalf of the good folks here at Calvary Bible Church, I am Doug Benedict, and along with Pastor Jim Jenkins, who will be joining us just a little bit later on, we are joined this morning by some special guests, one you just heard who introduced the radio program, and that is my lovely wife, Sarah, and Mr. Pete Fitzgerald is just walking in the door. So we have some extra special supervisors this morning keeping us on track and making sure we don't say anything inappropriate or uncalled for, and it is a huge job for them. But as we get the show going, this is the last Sunday of July. Normally we would have our popcorn preaching tonight, but we have postponed it this week because we'll have an extra special guest tonight. I can't quite think of his name, so it's going to be a surprise for me as well when I get here tonight. But our times today, we will begin this morning at 9 o'clock with our fellowship breakfast. So as always, please come. We have more than enough food, and it's a great time to get to know people before we sit for the service, especially if this is your first time here. And if it is your first time, come up and say hi to Preacher and to me and Sarah and Pete. You'll be super happy, or we will be happy that you're here, and we hope you get something out of the service. So again, 9 o'clock this morning, 9.30 for Sunday school, 10 o'clock for the morning service, and we'll be out the door by noon. Then again tonight, we'll be back at 6 o'clock for the evening service, and then Wednesday night at 7 o'clock for the midweek Bible study and prayer service. All these services will be broadcast live at cbclewiscounty.com, just in case you can't make it out. But please, I can't emphasize enough, do not let that replace physically coming here. There's so much that you miss out by not being here. So as we encourage, please put in your GPS 6869 Sweeney Road in Greg, New York, or follow these super easy directions. If you're coming out of the South Lake Utica or Boonville, head north on Route 12. If you're coming out of the north, like Lowville or Watertown, head south on Route 12. And if you're coming out of Rome or West Leiden, head north on 26, keep straight on 12D, Head north on Route 12 and make a right-hand turn on to Burdick's Crossing Road. Now all these directions come together at Burdick's Crossing Road, which is right by the Valley Brook Drive-In Movie Theater. So take Burdick's Crossing Road all the way to the end, make a left-hand turn onto Greg Road, head up the hill, and make a first right-hand turn, which will be Sweeney Road. And that is right before the town of Greg, town offices, as well as the town barn. And we are up there about 200 yards on the right hand side. So again, 9 o'clock this morning, 9.30, 10.30, and then 6 o'clock this evening. If you would like to come but you don't have a ride, please give us a call. Our phone number is 315-348-6271 or you send, can send an email to cbclewiscounty at gmail.com and we'll be glad to have someone come pick you up. But now something that people really struggle with is doubt. It's not limited to anybody. Like almost anybody can doubt. The pastor is going to come and talk to you about the reasons that we do doubt and hopefully calm some of those issues that you might possibly have. So if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 John chapter 5, beginning in verse 13. And as you're turning, let's listen to greater vision as they sing Faces. I dreamed my life was done. I stood before God's Son It was time to see What my reward would be With love He reviewed my life To 
count what was done for Christ For that was what would last eternally See, I'd done my best to share That Jesus really cares And He would save if they would just believe Oh, but seldom did harvest come So few did I see one Showed me the faces of the ones who'd come because of me. So many faces that my life had led to Calvary. All those years I thought no. vision and the name of that song was faces if you didn't quite get the gist of the song it was about someone who died and went to heaven thought they had not been an influence on anyone's life and uh, turned around to see all the people that he had an influence and had actually led to christ won the christ and that's a good song it is a good song last two weeks two weeks ago yeah two weeks ago I got back from Nicaragua, and I'll tell you, folks, man, if I ever hear anybody ever complain 
about their lot in life here in America. You don't know what it means to, you, we have no idea what it means to have nothing. I mean, these people have nothing. They don't have jobs. They don't know. The government basically takes care of them. They live on dirt floors, no running water. That's socialism for you. That's, that's what we want in America. That's what many people are crying for. Well, we need to be fair to everybody. Well, if you go to Nicaragua, you'll find fairness. People are poor. They have nothing. Just, it, it is horrible. But, but, I'll, I'll say this. They, uh, they're some of the most friendly people that you'll ever meet. And uh, we had a great time down there and said, what do you go for? Vacation? No. Go down there and try to help the churches reach people with Christ, with the gospel of Christ. And so it was a really, a really great time that we had going down there. But we're glad to be back. We're glad to be back home. I, you know, Dorothy said there's no place like home, and that's true. And we are glad to be back. Very hot. 95 to 105 every day. You say, well, that's pretty hot. Well, yeah, it's hot, but I enjoy that. It's a whole lot better than 30 below. I have to tell you that. And uh, three feet of snow. So I uh, had a great time, but glad to be back. As Doug said, we want to again encourage you to come out and be with us. We always love new folks and visitors. And we have our share of new folks and visitors. So you come on out and be with us on this Lord's Day. One of the th things that we believe, and we do believe this, is that we believe that in the security of the believer. So what do you mean by that? Well, here's what I believe the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that a person can know for sure they're going to heaven when they die. Now, I know that there are some outfits that say nobody can really know they're going to heaven when they die. Well, that isn't what the Bible says. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 13, these things... Have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that believing you might have life through his name? Note the word, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. You've heard me say this. Hey, do you know for sure you're going to heaven? Not hope so, guess so, think so, maybe so, probably so. Do you know that you're going to heaven? We have a no-so salvation. I don't like the idea, hey, do you know that 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 you're going to heaven? No, but I know that I know that I'm going to heaven. So how do you know that? Because the Bible says so. The Bible tells us how that we can know. Now, there are many groups, there are some groups anyway, that teach that nobody really knows for sure. Nobody can know for sure. There are groups out there that say that, well, God will send you a false assurance and that you really won't be saved, and there's no way of really knowing whether you're saved or not until you die and, and you whether wind up in heaven or hell. Man, what kind of a God is that? Seriously. God wants us to know that we have eternal life. Now, sometimes, sometimes there is a problem. People have problems with this. And one of the problems is they have a lack of understanding, really, about what God really says. They Maybe they don't understand what they did. Maybe they don't understand grace fully. I've, I've had people say to me before, well, you Baptists believe that once saved, always saved. Well, absolutely, I believe that. And you also believe that you can live any way you want and still go to heaven. And I do not believe that. And so people say, well, you know, I've committed, committed a whole boatload of sins since I've been saved. And so I'm not sure whether or not I'm saved anymore. Friend, that's a poor understanding of what grace is. If, all, if any of us, if any of us had to depend upon our, the way that we lived and whether or not we sinned or not, after we're saved to get us to heaven, there aren't any of us that would get to heaven. No one would get to heaven. Because we, none of us are without sin. And to say, well, I don't know. I've heard people say this. I have a whole heap load of sins to answer for when I get to heaven. Hey, listen, that's a poor understanding of grace. When we get to heaven, there will not be uh, an answer for sin. 
There's only one payment for sin, and the Bible says that is death. That is death. The wages of sin is death. So if you're going to pay for one sin, two sins, ten sins, a hundred sins, or every sin, the only way to pay for it is by death. And friend, that's in the lake of fire. So the reason that people doubt whether or not they're saved, then maybe that's you today. You say, well, what does it mean to be saved, preacher? First of all, maybe we should cover that bridge, cross that bridge. What it means to be saved is to know that your sins are forgiven, that heaven is your home and Christ is your Savior. When we are willing to trust Christ and Christ alone to get us to heaven and ask him to forgive us of our sins and come into our heart and to save us, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in that heart that God hath raised them from the dead, thou shalt be saved. God wants us to be saved. The Bible says he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, the sad truth is that most will not. In America, that is very true. 45, 50 years ago, if you knocked on someone's door, you're out trying to talk to them about Christ. Hey, come on in. Now they come to the door. What do you want? I'm not interested. Beat it. Well, what is it you're not interested in? Me? The church? Heaven? Hell? What exactly is it that you're not interested in? If you go to a farm, particularly a third world country, Man, those people, they just, they they love for you to sit down and talk to them. And many of them will trust Christ as Savior. To be saved, to ask Christ to forgive you of your sins, to come into your heart, and to trust him to get you to heaven. Trusting him. We sing a song sometimes. Simply trusting every day, uh, trusting o'er the stormy way, even when my faith is small. Trusting Jesus that is all. Have you trusted him, friend? Have you trusted him today? There is no other way. I must needs go home by the way of the cross. There's no other way but this. I shall ne'er gain sight of the gates of the light if the way of the cross I miss. Have you trusted Jesus? Now, you say, well, preacher, I've trusted Jesus, but I have doubts sometimes. Doubt comes because of a lack of understanding that our sins are totally forgiven. The Bible says that he's forgiven us of all of our iniquities. Now, you may be able to find a place where all does not mean all, but as far as I've ever found, all means all. When I say all, all means all. And it says he's forgiven us all our iniquities, not some of our iniquities, but all of our iniquities. So doubt comes about as a as a as a result of a lack of understanding of the things of what's happened well i've committed a lot of sins you don't understand grace i've asked forgiveness of one sin so many times he won't forgive it you don't understand grace i'm just saying that re the reason that people doubt whether or not they're truly saved is because of because of a poor understanding, a poor understanding of what's happened. Not only that, but some of you listening would say, you know, I've heard you on the radio many times, and I've trusted Christ as my Savior. Preacher, I can honestly say that I asked Jesus to come to my heart. Now, I've never come to your church, but I have asked Jesus to come to my heart. That is great. But there are times you say, I, I still have, you know, another second reason that people doubt whether they're saved or not is a lack of growth. Second Peter 3.18 says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Have you grown? Have you grown? Have you grown in grace and in the knowledge? Do you know more about Jesus? Well, not really, you say. I, th I th believe that the Bible teaches there are several things that need to happen after you're saved. Now, these don't happen in order to be saved, but happen after you're saved. Man, you, if you say, preacher, I've listened to you on the radio and I've been saved, you know what the Bible wants you to do now? Get baptized. Well, I've been baptized. Well, before or after you were saved. See, baptism is only for people who have been saved. Well, I was baptized as a little baby. Well, that doesn't count. 
That doesn't work. They that gladly received his word were baptized. After you've been saved, you need to grow. Lack of growth can cause doubt in a person's life. A lack of growth can cause doubt. Well, I ask you to save me. Well, have you grown at all? Are you farther along the trail of spiritual life today than you were yesterday? Are you growing in grace? Really, a lack of growth in a person's life will cause them to doubt. It will cause them to doubt. Not only that, let me give you a third reason, if I might, today. The reason people doubt their salvation is a lack of, can I say it like this, total trust. Now, Dr. Bob always said this, that the smallest amount of faith, the smallest amount of faith will get a sinner into heaven. It doesn't take a lot of faith to get a person into heaven. It only takes a little bit, just a little bit. And by for by grace are you saved through faith. But a third reason that people doubt is, did he really forgive me of all my sins? Well, yeah, he really did. Yeah, he really did. He really saved me. Yeah, he really did. All I had to, got to, all I had to do was trust him. That's it. Well, I trusted him. Well, are you trusting him fully? Are you fully trusting? How's that song go? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood, washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting Him? Or, to some degree, are you trusting your works? Well, preacher, I asked Jesus to save me and I meant it, but man, I'm trying to do the best I can. And I think people ought to do the best they can. Don't misunderstand me on that one. I think we ought to live a good life. I think we ought to uh, seek to serve Him. Uh, you'll never find real fulfillment, real peace, real joy, real happiness until you decide this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow Jesus. But you say, well, there's a little doubt there, preacher. I, I'm just, I, I lived a, a terrible life. And I, I asked him to save me and I believed that he would save me. And I, I, I trusted him the best way I know how, but Preacher, I, I just can't believe he'd forgive me of everything. Well, the answer to that is absolutely he can and he will. And if you ask him to save you, he has. But people lack or people have a doubt. Well, I don't know whether I'm saved or not. I hope I'm saved. I think I'm saved. I guess I'm saved. Well, maybe I'm saved. But they would say, I don't really know that I'm saved. A lack of understanding, a lack of growth, a lack of total trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, or this one, a lack of sin confession. You, you said, I, I thought you just said our sins are forgiven. Yes, I did. But as we go through life, friend, we still commit sins and we need to have our feet washed and ask for that daily cleansing of our sin, but there are some people, here's what Peter says, that you can get so far away from God that you forget that you were ever saved. You forget you were ever saved. So far from God, you can forget you were saved. Well, I was saved at one time, but I don't think I'm saved anymore. Now, if you were saved at one time, friend, you're still saved. But there are people who say, well, you know, I just don't know. I know I asked him to save me. But man, I got all messed up in sin. My brother lives down in Chattanooga, Tennessee, down where my three of my boys live in Chattanooga. And he had a he has a brother he had a brother in law, let's put it like that. He had a brother in law. And he told me that every time they had a revival at church, that guy would get saved again. And uh, he would live for Christ for a little while, and then he'd get off into sin again. And the next time he had, he said he personally knew of him being saved seven times. You can't be saved seven times. I'm telling you that right now. You cannot be saved seven times. You can only be saved one time, and that's it. One time, one time only. The writer of Hebrews says it's impossible 
for a person who, if they fell, if it's number one, impossible to fall away, but if they fell away, it's impossible for them to be saved again. So if a person is, well, you know, I've just messed up, I've lived, and I said, what's the use? I can't do it anymore. Peter says that they are blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten they were purged from their old sins. Doubt. God doesn't want us to doubt. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Know that you have eternal life. That you might know it. Again, not hope so, guess so, think so, maybe so. Let me ask you this question again, friend. Do you know that you have eternal life? Do you know that? Do you know it? And again, people say, well, I hope so. Man, I wouldn't want to die with a hope so salvation. I want to die with a no so salvation. Yes, I know. I surely know. Paul said, I know whom I believe in and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I know it. I know it. And friend, you can know that too. If you've never been saved, the Bible says now is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Today, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, not next year. We're not even promised another heartbeat. Would you be willing to trust Christ right now? It's an hour of decision. The next 30 seconds may determine your whole eternity. Would you be willing to trust Christ right now? To call upon him right now? Lord, I know I'm a sinner, but I believe you love me. And Lord, I believe that Jesus died for me on the cross in the best way I know how. I trust him as my savior. Friend, if you'll call upon him, he'll save you. No question about that. He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Would you come to him? Would you ask him to be your savior today? And if you have asked him, he doesn't want you to doubt. D.L. Moody said this, no man will ever be of any use to God until he comes to a firm that firm conviction that he is saved by God Almighty. If you're today, you say, well, I'm saved. And you need that firm conviction in your soul that Jesus is my Savior. Heaven is my home. Look, if you've never trusted him, trust him today. If you have trusted him today, several reasons why you doubt. One, lack of understanding. Two, lack of, of, of confession of sin. Thirdly, a lack of of totally trusting him fourthly a lack of growth do you know today i said at the beginning we have a no so salvation we know that we are saved we know that it's not because we've ever done anything good not because we are go to church not because we are particularly righteous our righteous our righteousness is in christ and christ alone would you be willing to trust him today and to have a no-so salvation? Again, I know there are people, anybody, they'll say this. Anybody who says you know you can, that you can know for sure you're going to heaven, they're accursed. It's pretty strong language when the Bible says that we know that we have passed from death unto life. We know that we have passed from death unto life. We know it. Do you know it? Friend, trust him today. Call upon him today. We're not sure about another breath. We're not sure about another heartbeat. Call upon Jesus today and have a no soul salvation. Because listen, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow just might be too late. Friend, have you been saved and fall into one of these categories where you aren't totally sure that you're saved or you don't remember being saved? Or maybe you haven't even been saved and you want to know more about how you can be saved and have a home in heaven and know for sure that you home, have a home in heaven. If you fall into these categories, we are so glad you tuned in today. And we hope you did truly listen. And if you have any questions about how you can know for sure that you're going to heaven when you die, give us a call today. Our phone number here is 315-348-348. 6271, or you can send an email, and our email address is cbclewiscounty at gmail.com. Or even better yet, why don't you come join us today? There's an empty place in a pew that can only be filled by you. Thank you again for joining us this half hour. 
Lord willing, we will catch you again next week on Heaven Bound.